Hey, what is up guys and welcome back. So today we're going to be reviewing the Top Sky Prime 1S goggle here and uh, we're also going to take it apart, take a look at the internals and tell you about my current experience with this goggle. So let's get started. First, let's start with the external and see what else it comes with. So first of all, obviously you get the goggle exactly the same way as you see right here out of the box. And uh, they give you this really nice USB cable. I'm actually really in love with the USB cable here. So it's pretty interesting. And uh, they give you an extra foam, extra sticker to change the foam. And um, I think that's it. Yeah, they also give you the instruction manual and some cleaning cloths. But you don't get any antennas. So to keep that in mind if you are going to purchase this. Now, let's get cracking here. So if we take a look at the in inside here, we do have the two screens. It is actually using two screens. It's not just one screen with some kind of lenses that's that's doing all the magic here. It's actually two screens and two separate lenses. We also have our SD card to be installed up here. This is where you install it to record the DVR. We have two IPD adjustments and two diopter adjustments here. And uh, we also have an audio output, micro USB for flashing and also charging because it charges via micro USB. And this button is to turn off the receivers on and off if you are going to be connecting some kind of AV input. However, they do not provide the AV input cable. So you'd have to bring that yourself here. And on the bottom side, that's pretty much it. It also says use both hands to adjust the diopter. I know it's backwards, but I uh, read it five times already. So yeah, you're supposed to do that for some reason, but I'm just, I, I don't know why. Over here is the battery bay, which is um, kind of weird because you can't really access the battery bay without possibly ripping something. So if you take a look here, I don't know how you would take that out, but yeah, there's just a, a 1S battery in there. And then we're going to take it apart and take a look at uh, how everything is running here just in a tiny bit. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at the upper side. So it is diversity. It does have two receivers inside and it has this removable faceplate for some reason. I don't know why, but it does have that. And uh, here we have our buttons. The button layout is pretty nice. It's really well thought out. We do have a search button, channel button, band button, mode button, DVR, record, picture, and power. Power takes forever to boot up and uh, mine works. So out of the box, it works just fine. And some of the options it has in the firmware for the diversity is for fast switching or medium or slow. So you can have it just uh, for some reason be fast or slow. I don't know if it's just written there or it really actually does something inside the software. Now let's talk about my experience with this and, and, and how it was for me. Um, I couldn't use, I can't use this at all. I can't see anything. Uh, what do I mean by I can't see anything? Now, every other goggle in the market works perfect for me. Absolutely perfect from box to everything. Fat Shark Sky Zones, Iomways, uh, EV200s, EV100s. I've done all of them. I've used every single one of them. But this one, I cannot get it to be into a single image at all. So I'm always my I'm always seeing two screens. No matter what I do, no matter what I adjust, I sat looking through this for five, ten minutes, and it's not the fact that I can't make a merge into one screen. It's impossible. The the something is wrong with my I think something is wrong with the goggle here. Maybe one of the lenses is backwards or something, which I just I just cannot for the life of me get it to turn into one image. It's just always two screens. And I am having the worst eye pain of my life and i'm not joking about this right now making this review because i was trying so hard to actually see through this and i couldn't so i'm not i'm it's impossible for me to fly with this it's basically unusable for me so i'll take that into consideration i don't know maybe maybe they messed up here and they put two right lenses or two left lenses or maybe if i put this upside down it'll work i have no idea but actually i tried the upside down thing it didn't work so what we're gonna do is we're gonna just take it apart but uh, I can't tell you how it's actually using. The screen quality with one eye just looks okay. I mean, it's nothing bad. But um, flying, it's, I can't fly with this. Nothing. I can't do anything with this, to be honest. Except take it apart, possibly mod it, and use the screens for something else because it's very cheap. So th that's all I could really do here. So um, enough talking. I'm just going to start cracking this guy open. Let's just take a look at the internals and see what we find. All right, guys. So the first thing I noticed right now as I'm taking it apart, I saw taking it apart fully here. If we take a look, we do have two receivers, so it is diversity. Now, if you take a look at the bottom here where it says use both hands to adjust the diopters. And the reason for that is, is because this is the whole enclosure here that actually moves. So if you, you might move it one, you might move one side more than the other and you'll never get a clear image. So if you got those, you know, misaligned, then I think you're going to have to take a while to figure out how to do it. And as you can tell here, it's the build construction. I mean, isn't the greatest. I mean, can you see that? I mean, there's nothing wrong with it, I guess, but um, yeah. And uh, the kind of the limiting factor here is just a screw over there, which doesn't allow it to go 
more than it's supposed to, as you can tell here. So the screens are in this part here, as I believe right now. And we're going to take this apart in just a tiny bit. Now, for the IPD adjustments, as you can tell, this is where they're being adjusted. And uh, like I mentioned, there is no, nothing, you know, notchy. It's just friction that's holding them. It's those right there that are actually doing the uh, adjustments here. Also, if you take a look at these ribbons, these ribbons aren't the greatest ribbons. They were used also on Ayomoy V1s, which I've had a lot of issues with so far. And I have a video on that coming up very soon. But yeah, also, if you take a look here, you see how very nasty bends th those really have in them. I mean, if it's a little bit nastier than that, then that will cut some of the traces and thus not allow the... Uh, uh, data to pass through whatever was being passed through one of those lines because so, if you take a closer look here you can see the little lines and uh, you can easily just basically break the connection right there on those little bent parts so it's uh maybe they should have used a little bit smaller one or just a different size or a different one like they use for the lcds which are more flexible these are very brittle and um yeah just take that into consideration i'm not expecting much for 80 bucks so let's put this to the side here now if we take a look at the battery this is a really nice feature uh, it does have the battery, which is removable, and it is a 2000 milliamp 1S LiPo, or possibly lithium ion. It does have a protection circuit, or that could be just for show, but let's just give it the benefit of the doubt. It does have a protection circuit, as you can tell here, and they have it prepared for you with a JSC, so you could replace this if you had other ones. So that's really nice, but I, it was very difficult to actually even remove it from here. Uh, so I don't know how replaceable this would be in the field for you, but I mean, it's a really nice extra option that they've they've added here so let's put this to the side as well now with having it taken it apart i've also did boot it up and try to um try to actually see if i can get the screen to focus but i just think it needs a little bit more ipd to go inside a little bit more i guess i i just don't know because the closer i'm getting it inside the closer it is of becoming a one screen image and um this is just uh, very strange for me so i don't know i think it's for little kids or just people with really small heads or just something is wrong with my face. I have no idea, even though everything else works. So it's just really trippy for me. But I do highly believe possibly that it's due to probably one of the lenses. That's what I'm hoping for. And uh, I will talk to Banggood as well as uh, try to get a hold of Top Sky and see what's up with that or just that just these goggles weren't for me, I guess. Uh, we can't remove this because it's tape. So, I mean, as you can tell here, it starts ripping it. So I really wanted to remove it here, but I didn't. All right, guys, so in order to remove this piece from the main board here, what you have to do is you have to remove the long screws that were kind of like the end stops for this, which were, uh, it's just a two millimeter hex screw. It was, it was just in here, right there. You just remove them. And then when removing this, be careful. You don't want to bend it too much, the other side, because it goes in like this. So it would be actually inside like so. Oh, it's going to be a little bit tricky here. It would be inside here. You have to remove these notches up here first, but then you can't bend it all the way because the SD card part is the one that's portraying. And you just have to slowly just, you know, move it out of this little hole that's up here. And then you can get this out. Just be very careful and uh, don't pull these out because the L these are the LCDs and they are connected via ribbon cables. And um, let's take a look at this. As you can tell here, these are the ribbon cables that I was talking about that I think would be a lot better to use than the ones they used on the uh, sides here, which are these ones right there. Uh, these are just more flexible and they're just uh, more durable. They could last a lot longer. So right now I'll just remove the uh, screens here and we're gonna take a, a closer look on the other side of the board. The screens are really nice. Can't wait actually to take them for something else. <laughs> uh, okay, so if we take a look at the two receivers here, they are connected via pins right there. So pin headers, let's just see how easy it is to remove this I'm just uh, have to be very careful so as you can tell here we still do have some of the uh, issues here with the routing as you can tell this is a uh, this is what Joshua Bardwell's video was trying to show you so this is for the receiver part and we'll, we'll figure out what the issue was here but it seems like it's the power circuit here uh, we'll figure that out in a little bit let's take a look at this side here you know other than the little errors they have the overall build is pretty decent but it, it could be a lot better also uh, in my opinion this also seems like a power circuit here all right so here we have the main board and the main board looks pretty clean so i'm gonna take it out of its main case and we just take even a closer look on this guy all right guys so as you can tell here is the basically internal hardware that we're taking a look at we have two really nice screens here that i i just 
you know, I want to take advantage of them and make some sort of a ground station in sort of a way with two screens and that takes Fat Shark modules, design a nice enclosure for it. So I really want to do something with this and I don't want to just uh, get rid of it. Uh, but as a goggle, I can't use this. It's not the goggle for me. It just doesn't work at all as a goggle for me. Uh, but as you can tell here, for example, we had Joshua Bardwell. I saw his video where his stopped working. And uh, the issue could be, um, I'm probably like 70% certain, uh, he probably either damaged this cord here. And the reason why I say that is because this is where you enable your TX and RX, which I mean, this is where you enable your uh, built-in receivers. And by default, it's off. So if this there's no connection going in through this little module here, then you will not receive anything. And right now I could do all the searches I want, even though I have a quad on. It won't pick up anything because this has to tell it that the receiver has to be on. By default, the receivers are off or the input of the receivers are off. So take that into consideration. If some reason it's not working, then your issue is probably due to this module or this ribbon cable. And what you can do to test it, I think these are exactly the same size. You can take this one, put it on this side and see if it'll work. But then again, when you want to go charge it, you're going to have to take this cable and put it here. So it's, it's really nice in the fact that it's modular, but I wish the execution was completely different. And again, the diopters... Uh, these are not what actually moves the diopters. It has like some car some sort of a gear reduction. As you can tell, as I'm spinning this, that will move the uh, screen out and in. That's why they want you to use both of them at the same time here. So, you know, it doesn't push one side more than the other. But overall, I think the internal hardware I could use for something else, in which I will. I'm not going to throw this away or have it go to waste. Um... I'm going to do something with this setup here. Uh, I don't know what to do just yet with it, but if you guys are interested in seeing it, let me know. If not, I'm just going to do it for myself. And also, what would you like to see done with this? I'm, I'm planning on putting some kind of Fat Shark module uh, way to add the modules to it. Also, AV input. Obviously, we do have AV input. And even use the internal receivers. Maybe we can test out the internal receivers on this. But um, I, I just I, I just love little LCDs like this. I just I'm just never able to find any good ones. Uh, these look really nice, but I mean, that's all I can really say, guys. I really hope you guys enjoyed the video. If I did help you purchase or avoid a product, please consider using my links down below. And I also do have a Patreon. If you can, go ahead and support me there. That would be super awesome. And, um, well, that's it, guys. I really hope you guys enjoyed the video, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace out.